Hi, uh, my name is David Rossetti. Uh, I'm an actor and choreographer. Um, I wanted to uh, tell my story um, because uh, I think it's just so important to know that, that you're not alone, that people have gone through like almost the exact same experiences as you. There's somebody out there that has gone through what you've gone through. And it's about reaching out to friends, the supportive friends that love you unconditionally. Um, um, I was born in a small town in uh, Melbourne, Florida. Um, had a pretty liberal school, but I still, uh, I still experienced a, a good amount of, not serious bullying, but I, I got called every name in the book. Faggot, queer, um, little gay boy, fairy, um, I was heavily involved in theater, and I also was in band and chorus. So, I mean, three three big whammies right there in the dichotomy that is high school. Um, but, you know, in my social uh, outcastness, um, I I really found some really amazing and true friends that I'm that I'm still friends with today. And I think that's probably my best advice for anybody who's, who's experiencing bullying is, you know, find that one friend that loves you unconditionally and, and doesn't care um, and just hold on to them and, and you know, and, and don't be afraid to talk to them. If you don't have anybody like that, you know, there's great things like the Trevor Project um, uh, that you can reach out to. and. and places that you can go. There are people just like you that are uh, looking for answers and you might be surprised to find somebody. Um, but I, I basically just wanted to to tell my story because like, you know, who am I in the grand scheme of things? Except I am a out and proud gay man and I'm proud of this. I know it's not a choice. It is the way I am wired and uh, it gets better. It absolutely, absolutely gets better. Um, I will tell you about my lowest point um, was came when I came out. And uh, again, I was, I'm from a small town in, in Florida. And the actual really heavy bullying that I got was actually from my parents. Well, my mom was said, hey, you know, your father's coming down to have a discussion. So knowing what that means, my heart starts beating immediately. I mean, I, I remember just all the blood rushing to my face, just getting completely red and, and just, oh my God, oh my God. And I remembered finding some research from a website on my dad's, um, on my dad's computer. There was like a stack like this big of like, Bible verses, different websites, I mean, like, everything you could imagine. I mean, it was, like, my nightmare. So I knew that was about to hit. But what had basically happened is my dad did this whole big dramatic um, presentation with Bible verses and everything and all the research. He had passages highlighted, circled. He put them in front of me to cite them. And, I mean, it was, I, I can't tell you the altered state that I was at that, on that evening. My mom was sitting there, my dad just kind of blasting into me and my, what he thought was my decision. Um, and it was very traumatic. I, I remember him putting down a piece of paper that was actually a contract on my life. It was, I was 17, so, I mean, they could, I guess, technically do this, but he drew up a contract, a piece of paper that said I couldn't hang out with any other known homosexuals. I couldn't talk to my, my best friend in the world because they thought he was gay. They said they would check the phone records to make sure who I was calling. If I went out in a group, I had to give them names of everybody, names and numbers of everybody that I was going with. I had a curfew of, you know, 9.30. Um, uh, you know, my internet would be monitored. My internet usage would be monitored. Um, they would go through my uh, belongings to make sure I didn't have any, you know, lascivious materials. I mean, it was, and again, this was all on a piece of paper in front of me. And um, 
So, uh, and at the bottom, you know, I had three consequences. No car, no car and phone. And then finally, the last one was I would go to move to Orlando and be under 24-hour supervision of my father and finish out high school there. I was going into my, I was in the middle of my senior year, so I would have moved and been under 24-hour surveillance of my dad who worked from home. And I was like, I'm not signing this. And they said, well, I guess we can go to consequence three right now. And so I had to sign it. I signed that document because I, I felt there was no way else I could stop everything that was happening. And I tell you, I, I thought all sorts of things that night. I ran to my room. I cried. I wrote letters that I eventually ripped up. I contemplated how I was going to kill myself, uh, you know, it was a really dark time, but I, I'm here to tell you, things, it, it all gets better. And again, it all gets better. Every year it gets better. Every year we, the doors are open to more and more conversations, and she has more questions that are kind of answered, and concerns that are eased. So, um, you know, at first it's going to feel dramatic, and at first it feels like there's no way out, but there is. So it gets better. It gets so much better. It even gets fabulous. Trust me. When you can make decisions on your own, and you know that it wasn't a choice, and that you weren't trying to hurt your parents, it was, it's just the way you are, and when you can finally live as you are, I tell you, it is. It's not better. It's fabulous. And I hope my little message is heard out there and uh, you all take it to heart because um, I've been there and it gets better. Thank you.